Hey guys, welcome to another episode here at bringspark.com. Uh, as you know, I like to have guests here who have different skills and different knowledge about stuff that most people don't know too much about. And the guy that I'm with here today, he's got insights into at least two different aspects of life that a lot of people, especially men, really have a lot of interest in, but not that much knowledge or, or skill in. So I'm really excited to have him here today. Uh, we've met several times on workshops and seminars around the world, well, maybe most in the US, I guess. And uh, I really like what he has to say, and we get along great, and I was very happy that he accepted my invitation to be on bringspark.com. And we're going to talk a little bit about self-defense and alpha male and tactical training. And we're also going to talk about seduction and communication between men and women and that whole bit there. It's going to be an amazingly fun show and I can't wait to get started. So, bravo. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you for having me, man. Like I was saying in our, our pre-interview just a second ago, uh, we've been to a lot of seminars together. And there's a lot of guys when you're out and about that, that are speaking or that, that are at the event that you kind of don't like too much. And and you don't want to associate too much, but you're one of the good guys. So I'm happy to do this. I'm happy for us to talk. And, and actually, too, it seems like a lot of guys at Johnny's events are the good guys. So that works out well. Yeah, I would, so. I would say so. So why don't you start out by telling us a little bit about yourself, about your, your past, and how you ended up uh, doing all the cool shit that you do. I'll be happy to. Um, I am 35 years old now, but when I was 19 years old, uh, in 1999, I started working at a gun range here in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm, I'm in Arizona, which is a pretty big gun, pro-gun state. Um, I always kind of had ideas about getting into law enforcement or something with that, like that. So I was thinking if I got into the tactical side of things, learned all these skill sets, it would help me out later when I, when I went into that career path. Some things happened along the way. One of them was I got married. Uh, less than a year later, after a miscarriage, we got divorced. So I was fucking crushed after that. Um, I also got hearing damage in my left ear uh, from some of the gun classes. So that kind of fucked up my whole path of where I was going in life. Um, it worked out pretty well, though, because obviously I'm at where I'm at now. I wouldn't change anything for the world. But when I was working at the gun range, I was able to take a lot of cool classes, attend a lot of awesome things that, like, most civilians aren't, just aren't able to go to. And it's because I worked at this place. Um, we sold firearms. Uh, I, was the, I went from the work in the range desk to um, being a firearms instructor to eventually becoming the director of training where I wrote and taught all the tactical classes. So all the defensive pistol, tactical pistol, room clearing, low light. Low light's one of my specialties. Um, I trained some of the top guys in the world at that. Uh, then I got in, I kind of bored with guns, and I got into edge weapon training, which is awesome, and it's all cool shit that I like and a lot of guys are into. Um, but when I found out when I got divorced that it wasn't very conducive to meeting women, I would go to a gun class or an edge weapon class, and I'd be around all these sweaty old guys all day. <laughs> so I learned a lot of cool knowledge, but I decided I needed to change my life. So um, I, I got a whole story about everything that happened, but basically I was, I was stood up on New Year's Eve and I was like, all right, I'm going to give myself one year to figure out this, this area of my life. Cause I was bad at not just meeting women, but getting high caliber, high class, like awesome women. Um, I was bad at making friends. I was bad at small talk. I was bad at connecting with other people. I felt like I was pretty well squared away if I needed to take a bad guy out in a bar somewhere, but I didn't know how to cold approach someone and just make friends wherever I went. So I decided, all right, this year which was uh, 2004, the divorce was finalized. So all of 2005, I was like, all right, I'm going to commit myself to this shit. And I even quit doing the tactical stuff. I started working at a yoga studio because it was just so far out of my comfort zone. Um, started meeting different people along the way, people with completely different mindsets. I always joked that I needed uh, more yin in my yang. And then I, I, about several months into this, I heard about a book called The Game, read it. The difference is I read it in three days. And on day number one, or I guess night number one, I would already out trying stuff that I had read. Um, a lot of this stuff in the pickup world, I'm not a big fan of, but this book did have a huge impact on me, changed my life. Uh, I read the book, and then a year later, I met Neil Strauss, who wrote it. He offered me a job, brought me on board um, as like the alpha male coach for the company, and they, we had different coaches that specialized in different things. And then kind of like what happened at the, at the gun range, I went from being a, a junior coach to a senior coach to then the executive coach, which was the head coach of the company, um, conference manager, ran the boot camp. Some guys needed to be on video, like making out with chicks. You can find YouTube videos of me doing that. Um, I was that guy. And then five plus years ago, I, I broke off and started my own company. Well, I shouldn't say broke off. Um, things went the way they did. And I started my own company, which was the best thing ever. Cause now I'm successful. I'm doing my own thing. I do boot camps and one-on-ones and phone coaching. I work when I want with who I want guys have to apply to work with me. 
And uh, I get to focus and only teach all the cool shit that I want to teach and work with the guys I want to. So things right. are pretty fucking awesome right now. And and you said something during our pre-interview that I loved. And, and now that I'm thinking about it, I've heard you say this before. Uh, you said that a lot of the, the coaches out there, whether it's, you know, pick up or whatever it is, they're teaching guys how to pretend to be cool or how to pretend to know what they're doing, how to pretend to be attractive. Just like, you know, you wouldn't teach self-defense to have people pretend like they're tough. You teach self-defense to make people tough. And you teach, you know, your your attraction stuff isn't tricks and mani manipulations or, or lies or scripts or whatever. It's genuine, authentic, you know, male, alpha male type uh, personal development that, that creates that attractiveness. And that's one of the reasons an effort to try to be around when you're doing your speeches, whenever we're teaching at the same place, because I love that you're actually trying to help guys, uh, you know, become what they want to become instead of just giving them all this, you know, fluff. So what do you think is the main difference between, you know, teaching people to pretend to know what they're doing and actually doing, teaching them what you teach them? I, I, that's, I mean, I, like you said, I, that's the same way I feel. And I think a lot of us who go and do the seminars and do the talks, all of us who think like-minded all kind of gravitate towards each other. Um, and it's funny because a lot of the guys I know are all telling me after I talk, they're like, why are you using the PUA name, man? Like you do everything you're saying. It's nothing like pickup. And I just kind of think of like pickup as like martial arts. Like there's some martial arts that's awesome and amazing. And there's a lot of martial arts that shit where you're teaching kids that like we call them McDojo's out here. They're in like the little corner grocery store market and there's like a little karate or taekwondo school there um and all the ads in the old martial arts magazine back in the day where it would say like beat any attacker in like seven seconds <laughs> well guess what there's guys saying pick up any chick in seven seconds right. and if you're a, a, a squared away guy you know that shit doesn't work because that's not how real life is so i i guess just everything i had done beforehand all the tactical training uh, martial arts. I did Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu years ago. I was even a couple cage fights years ago, but it was just style versus style. It wasn't like like MMA like it is today, but it was like in dingy little shithole bars and stuff. So it's I think just coming from that mindset where I was like, I'm not going to teach something in my gun class that would get someone killed because that's just bad. That's just unsafe. You're a piece of shit. It's a liability. Um, it's just wrong. So I think I think that's just my mindset with everything I've done. So when I got into pickup, I can remember reading the game. And, like, it was amazing, but as I read it, I was like, oh, this is stupid. Oh, that's gay. I'll never say that. But I understood why this stuff worked. And so I just modified it and made it my own right away. It's funny. I actually didn't even do any of the canned routines or anything from the game until we were getting ready to do one of the, the very first boot camp. We flew out to New York, and I'd actually never even been there before. And I was like, oh, man, we're teaching out in New York. This is fucking crazy. I'm just some guy from Arizona. And um, I was like, shit, I better use some of these routines. I'm working for the guy who wrote the book. I should probably have, have done them. And so I went out. But then the thing is, the routines worked. And I, they worked because I was able to make them work. And I also understand, I think a big thing that a lot of guys miss, even the guys who are in the book or teach this stuff professionally, the routines are only there if you need them. And the guys, like I've worked with guys who are, are so shy and timid around women, one of them uh, well, I'm not going to say his name on my forum, but he's on my forum. He's active. I'm coaching him now again. And uh, he was so nervous around women that if it was a, a female server would come to the table and ask them to like what they would want to eat. He was so nervous. He couldn't even order his food from her. He'd have his mom or his sister order. So when I get a guy like that, I kind of, I can't go, Hey, I just go up and tell the girl you think she's beautiful and you want to get to know her, which is a great, I mean, I, I think every guy should have that skill set. and You need to have the balls to be able to pull that off. But he's just not there yet. So I'm like, all right, well, here's the conversation. Here's, here's an opener. Here's something you can say just so he goes out and gets acclimated to it and realizes nothing bad's going to happen mm -hmm. and we can get rid of all those irrational fears. And then also because, like, the conscious mind can only handle five variables plus or minus two, if, like, like me, I was horrible at body language. I was horrible at, like, smiling. I was the guy that would smile and it looked like I was shitting my pants because <laughs> it wasn't congruent with my face. So if, if you're trying to like just focus on one little skill set, like, hey, I got to learn how to fucking smile more and not look like I'm angry and want to get in a fight with everyone here. I had to like focus on that. So it, it, routines did help me, but the difference is they were my own routines and it, it was it was great for what they were. But just think of them as training wheels and once you don't need them anymore, I don't have training wheels on my mountain bike because that's going to fuck me up. 
So you use the training wheels only as long as you absolutely need to, and then take them off, and you're going to fall down and get hurt and skin your knee, but eventually you're not going to need them anymore. And as soon as you don't need those tools anymore, you fucking get rid of them. Whereas a lot of guys, even guys I know that teach this stuff, never get past that. They're still using other people's routines. Absolutely. And as I talk to them about that, I'm like, wait, you're not like, don't you get bored? Don't like, isn't that weird? And they're like, hey, it works. <laughs> and so as soon as I see that mind or, or hear that answer, I instantly know everything about them and where they're coming from. And I mean, to me, it was never about getting something that works. It was about fixing and improving this area and aspect of my life. Mm. So I guess I came at it from a different direction too, which then, I mean, there's different paths to enlightenment. Sure. Some people get stuck along the way. Yeah. Well, it seems to me, and, and when you teach someone from the perspective of, you know, challenging them and, and developing them as a person and their, their confidence, their skills, their, their belief in themselves and, and whatever else, you know, training, training wheels are great. But once you reach a certain level of comfort with yourself, you don't want to use them anymore. Like, even if you know that they work, it just makes no sense to you to use them anymore because it gets boring. You have the same it's conversation late. over and over again. Come on. And and it's it just doesn't seem congruent with who you now know that you are. So I'm all for training wheels. I completely agree with you. But, if and, you need and, them. Yeah, and to me – Some guys don't even need the training wheels. Yeah, exactly. You get rid of them because you don't, you realize that you don't need them. And the people that keep doing the training – using the training wheels year after year – to me, those are the people who are working on the wrong thing. They're working on the words that they say instead of the person that they are, instead of the that fundamental stuff. But and uh, to me, I would rather I would rather go out and approach a girl and have her reject me for being me, because once you get good at this stuff, it's no longer about picking up girls. It's you're going out and you're trying to make friends or build connections. And I'm interviewing her to see if she's cool enough for me. Right, And that's just a whole different reality that most guys will never get to, which is just, I mean, they're going for the low hanging fruit or they're going for the apple and orange that's on the ground. Whereas you and I, we're like, that's the one I want. Exactly. And, then, and then when we get it, if it tastes like shit, we don't care. We'll throw it away and get another one. <laughs> that's the difference. Now, now I, I assume, and I, I did, I don't know if we've ever talked about this, but I did martial arts most of my life and I, I was a coach there too. So I have some, some experience with that, but you have experience with, a lot more than just you know on the mat type training. You have the the self development, the no sorry, the self defense and the tactical training. Now I would assume that there's a lot of similarities between working with people when you're trying to teach them how to defend themselves and how to you know be able to take care of the bad guy as it is when you're teaching people how to be more confident and, and how to approach. Uh, what are the major like what what have you taken from what you know about tactical training and self defense? into the self-development industry. All right. We have talked about martial arts a little bit, but was it judo or karate Ishinryu? Judo. I did judo. I did a bunch of, you know, additional training to that, but I did competition judo. So it wasn't really, you know, I did some self-defense self training, but mostly it was just to, to win matches. Right. So it's not and the it's, same that you were doing. Well, it's, it's similar to like Brazilian jiu-jitsu, but when I started it, it was, um, the most of the stuff I did was more self-defense. Now a lot of it's like sport orientated competition. Yeah. Um, but you, you see how some of it carries over, but then you do other stuff and you're like, oh yeah, that's a move I would never do like in real life, but in a match it would, it's viable. Right. So I think right. the problem is a lot of people though, don't, can't tell the difference. They're like, well, I know this and I'll do this in real life also. And you're like, eh, you gotta be smart enough to realize this is a, this is a, a tournament move and this is a street move. Right. But the, I'd say the biggest thing that, that really helped me was, um, was really the firearms training side of things. Because when you, we, if we're let me rewind. Some of the training I did was uh, low light training because 80% of all shootings occur in low light situations. And if like a bad guy is taking hostages in the house, it's not me standing at the range with my gun and my perfect shooting platform, shooting at the paper targets and no stress or anything, or just some guy with a timer. That's not the thing that I have to worry about. Like I'm moving and I have to corner and I have to maybe transition and I'm using the flashlight. Uh, I'm strobing it. I'm using it away from my body because I want to use it offensively. And someone's shooting back at me. And once you start doing that, it's just a whole different reality. So it's like punching the punching bag versus ha like just rolling in judo class or Brazilian jiu-jitsu class. Like there's just – like having that grappling dummy. There's just no there, – you could practice a couple things on that or some technique, but it's just – you can't practice with a grappling dummy or punching bag and think you know how to fight. Right. So right. that when – I, when I first did my big first class on that and realized how much I didn't know and how – Real life is a dynamic, unfolding set of circumstances. It's basically 
chaos. And I had to learn how to thrive in chaos and how to not get shot and shoot the other guys. So I learned those skills. Then I got in a pickup and I went out to the bars and clubs and I was like, this is chaos. There's all these people here. I don't know. Oh, I'm looking at something. I'm recognizing a pattern. Okay. They look like they're together. Oh, they look like they're friends. Those people are celebrating a bachelorette party or I'm approaching a table and I see there's three girls sitting at the table and it's a four seater and the three girls each have an empty glass in front of them and a half empty glass in front of them. So I know right away that the girls have been there for a little bit. They're one and a half drinks in. There's only three of them because the glasses match up and there's an empty seat. So just be able to read situations like that and just see things that so many people don't see. That actually comes from something called the OODA loop, the OODA loop. Okay. There's a guy named Colonel John Boyd. He actually is the guy that like developed the F-15, F-16. One of his main guys is the guy who developed the A-10. So he's this Air Force pilot guy. And a lot of people consider him the best military strategist ever. Um, they wrote about him on Art of Manliness recently. And um, uh, Robert Greene did a blog post about him a while ago. But I read his biography. I've studied this guy's stuff. It's amazing. Um, he's like a fighter pilot ace. Like his nickname was 42nd Boy. Within 40 seconds, he could reverse positions on anyone that was out there. Wow. Um, but he, he basically figured out that the thought process loop that we go through when we do anything is four stages observation, orient, decide, and act. And so a lot of people think the action phase is the, the hard part, but really it's all the observational skills and the orientation, deciding, and knowing what to do. Like using the fighter pilot analogy, once you get on someone six and I'm going to pull the trigger and shoot one of my missiles at them, that's the easy part. Just doing this is the easy part. Mm. It's all the other shit getting there that's the hard part. Right. Same thing doing like room clearing. Like everything getting there is the hard part. But once I land up my sights and press the trigger, the action part's pretty easy. So by drilling that so much, it helped me start understanding the process. And when you understand the process that every human goes through when we're making conscious decisions, the thought process loop, they also call it the OODA loop. When you understand the process, you can do it more effectively. And so this is one of the things that just helped me out more than anything probably in the world with pickup. Cause I'd go out, see a girl's wearing a little necklace. That's like a little, um, like it's the yoga symbol. So as soon as I see that, boom, as I'm approaching her, I see things, but most people don't see. Mm. They're just looking, but they're not seeing. So little things like that, seeing the girl's body language, seeing her smile, seeing the girl look disinterested, seeing her friends, I'm observing. And the more I observe, the more information I can gather, the more likely I am to make correct decisions afterwards. So I think that was the biggest thing. And I, I highly recommend everyone who's on here to like just get on Wikipedia and just Google it. You don't have to read the whole book and all the stuff I did. There's tons of stuff out there. But OODA cycle, the OODA loop, one of the best things that you can ever learn about. That's right. And it applies to everything. Right. Because <laughs> while you were talking, I'm, I'm thinking this seems to me to be a, a problem. Like I do, I work with, with individual clients, I work with corporate uh, clients and whatnot. And one of the biggest things that I see all the time is that people's community usually are a result of oversimplification or a misunderstanding, which is to say that they'll see a situation and they'll just glance at it and they'll make a decision about what that situation is. So if we, if we pull it to the bar, you know, they'll see a girl and it's a girl. That's all they see. That It's a girl that's either attracted to them or not. And that's it. And they, they neglect to see, you know, who she with, what she, you know, what she doing, what's her body language telling us, uh, is she drunk? Is she sober? What's the situation? Uh, but to most people, you know, you've said, you said it yourself, when you, when you walk into a bar or a club, it's chaos. And most people kind of drown in that chaos. They look at it and they're overwhelmed and they're in their head too, because they're thinking about all the shit they're supposed to do and supposed to say and all this. What would be like, how do you help people get from that, that state of near panic or, or at least overwhelming, um, sensations of chaos to, a place where they're actually in a state where they can observe and then make the right decisions from there. So two things, I'm going to jump back to what you said a second ago too, about the guys going into the bar and see the girl they're observing, but their observation. And, and like I said, if you read this up, uh, read up on the Odoo loop more, um, it talks about the hypothesis stage where people draw in like ideas and previous experiences and cultural heritage and beliefs. And that all gets put into that, that mixture. And so what happens is a lot of AFC guys, We'll look at a girl and go, oh, that girl will never be, be interested in a guy like me. Or, oh, that couple's probably together and they're probably dating. 
Whereas you and I are looking at it, we're like, no, that girl's talking to that guy. She doesn't even want to be talking to that guy. She doesn't even know that guy. Like, if you go in right now, you'd be saving her. But that's not what they're seeing because they don't have all those little files to put in there and give a more educated view on the world. And then they decide not to approach, and then their action is inaction. So, again, if you understand the process, it, it helps with everything. But the guys who, they're not seeing what we're seeing. So to answer the second question, or the real question, um, the two ways to get into it is, I, I, the way I do it with my guys when I'm doing one-on-ones, is the guys start getting overwhelmed, I'll pull them aside and I'll say, all right, you're overthinking this, you're thinking about too many things right now, because the conscious mind can only handle so many things at once. So right now you're thinking about A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, and you're going to fuck them all up. So stop all that, just do one thing right now. Just one thing at all. The opener I told you earlier, go say it to her. Or... Just go up and, and, and say whatever you want. Just do something, because something is always better than nothing. A bold action forward, a bold step forward is always better than no, no step forward, no momentum. Mm. The other thing I'll do, too, is if, um, if the guys are really getting overwhelmed, I'll go, okay, I recognize what's happening. I'll pull them back. We'll sit down. I'll say, all right, time out. Let's look and see what we're looking at. And I'll tell them to look around the room. And I go, all right, that two set, the table over there, the girl in the red, how do you think they know each other? Let's come up with some ideas. And a lot of the students will look and they're like, um, well, I, I don't know. They're probably coworkers. And I'm like, well, why'd you, why do you think that? Why would you say that? And they're like, uh, I don't know. And then they're not even trying and they're just making up shit. And I was like, no, no, like really try to – if I told you there's a million dollars on the line, what would it be? Like how, how do they know each other? And then little things like that will start getting them out of their head and they start focusing on something. And then all the other stuff, just like going to the gym, just like running, just like riding a motorcycle, everything else has to get filtered out because their conscious mind's – focusing on one thing. And then once they do that, we can go, Hey, let's go find out. And I've done that with guys where I'm like, let's go find out how they know each other. No, you know what? I think it's this. Let's talk to them later and figure out what, what it is. And then it also becomes a game because it's fun. If it's not fun to go out and approach other people and make friends like to you and me, we like meeting new people. We like meeting interesting, fun people. You travel a lot. I travel. Whenever I travel anywhere, I love meeting friends wherever I go. When I go to, when I was in Japan, one of the best things I ever did was just literally walking and just walking with no direction of where I was going to go, seeing some place that looked cool, walking inside and just meeting people. Absolutely. Same thing I did when I was in Miami doing like infield video. Every night we were done. I just, I was there for four nights. One night I walked North, one night I walked East, one night I walked West, one night I walked South. And every night I had great times. I met cool people along the way, but a lot of guys aren't there yet. So I'm like, all right, let's just have fun doing something. Like right now we'll try to figure this out. Or remember that funny line I told you earlier that I, I said never to use Let's use it now. Let's see how it works for you. And just anything like that, just to kind of get them out of their head. And then the biggest thing is their belief system is they're so scared that they're going to get rejected or a girl's going to tell them to fuck off, which really all I do along the way is I just realize and learn that women have bad taste. I'm not getting rejected. They just aren't recognizing the amazing opportunity they have to hang out with a guy like me. Right. But I really believe that in a non-cocky way, that I'm awesome. And anyone who, who's in my life is blessed to have me in their life. And anyone who's in my life, I'm blessed to have in my life because we, we both are like that. So once you also have that inner game belief system down, then, I mean, approaching people's nothing. So, so the guys have all these irrational fears. You go out, I show them nothing's going to happen. Nothing bad will happen. And even if it does happen, their worst fear comes true. It doesn't fucking matter because at the end of the day, I'd rather be the guy who tried and got rejected than the guy who didn't. And for a week afterwards, just was disappointed and mad at myself because I pushed out again. Uh, Which is what I always used to do. Yeah. Now, uh, this sounds to me to be heading towards something that I know that you teach. And you said that at Style Life, that was, that was your thing too. You're the alpha male trainer. Now, could you talk a little bit about you know, the alpha male? Why is this something that you do? Why is this something that you focus on? Well, I didn't realize it at the time, but all the stuff I had been doing beforehand had basically been building me up as this alpha male. And it's interesting because perception is reality. And like, I didn't perceive myself as this like badass dude. And then I would go out with my friends and we're, there'd almost be trouble somewhere or if something bad was going to happen, I'd have my friends go, oh man, thank God. Like we said, my name's Bravo, but my real name's Steven Grush. So they go, oh, Steve, I'm so glad you're here. And uh, then when I was in LA and oh, Bravo, I'm so glad you're here in case something bad happened. And I was like, wait, that guy, like, I, really? Like you guys thought that? And I, I really didn't start thinking about it until I got back to Arizona. And then I was like, man, like I, I just assumed that other guys have learned shit like this. Like I wrestled for a bit in high school doing martial arts, edge weapon, firearms training. I just assume there's a lot of people out there who've done this. And maybe coming from my social circle, which was all SWAT guys and tactical guys, we were all into that stuff. 
but I found out that most people weren't. So then when I was in California, as soon as anyone found out about this shit, everyone would ask me about it. Oh, I want to learn how to shoot a gun. I want to learn how to do this. And then slowly that started, like, I started realizing that, oh, these aren't really the skills that everyone has. And so then, like I said before, about everything I had learned along the way, to me, just carried over. But really, it's, it's like if you do anything well, if you're an amazing musician, if you're an amazing painter, if, if you play golf really well, I mean, all the skills and, and all the things that you learn developing that skill are all directly applied to this stuff. Like, you have to go out, you have to put in the hours, you have to put in the reps. And so then, by me, when I, when I started really realizing where I was at, I was like, man, I go out, and, like, I'm not scared of, like, guys – getting mad because I'm hitting on their girl, which is one of the guy's biggest fears. Because I was like, if anything happens, I'll be able to take care of myself. But I've never had an issue ever. And I mean, I've approached girls and said crazy fucking things. And I've never had any issue where there was like a guy who wanted to fight me afterwards. A couple of my students have ran into issues, but they're usually in shithole bars or guys are saying really inappropriate things. But it really, it really clicked in my head one night when I was out and um, I was talking to a, a group of people and I was like, oh, you guys remind me of my friends back home. I started chatting with them. And then I was, as I was trying to get to know everyone and figure out the relationship, the one guy and girl, I was like, you guys are kind of close. Like, have you guys been dating for a while? And they both look at each other and they're like, no, we're brother and sister. And I was like, oh, shit. Sorry, man. I, oh, it's kind of weird. And I was like, but you guys are really cool. That's, that's cool. I don't have that relationship with, like, with my brother or sister where we hang out like this. Like, oh, that's pretty awesome. Well, then I started getting to know him more. I started flirting around with the sister. So then finally I go over to the brother later and I was like, hey, man, your sister's really cool. Like, I, I kind of want to hit on her, but I don't want to do anything inappropriate like with you here and step on your toes. I was like, so are, is it cool if I ask for a number? And the brother's like, dude, go for it. Like, you're cool. I'd rather have my sister date a guy like you than these fucking douchebags. <laughs> and so that's when I realized like a big thing is, is, is other guys, it's like prison. As long as they don't feel like they're disrespected, you're not going to have problems with them. And so I always give respect, and so I get respect. Um, I also don't have some little AFC angry virgin chip on my shoulder, where, and you know the guys, where they go out and they're like, now I, got, now I know the skills to get girls. Let's fucking teach everyone a lesson. And I'm like, yeah, well, you're putting that out there. You're going to be drawing it back. And then lastly, I think just, um, like I said, was like I, I know how to defend myself, so that was never an issue. But my confidence from that area of my life, just like if someone's a, an accomplished musician or artist or whatever, any other art form, if they're very confident squared away in that area of their life, that confidence carries over to all the other aspects of their life. And so it took a long time for me to realize this, but I would meet girls, even like my ex. And th- th- when I told them that I had problems with like self-confidence, no one could believe it. Like my ex was like, what are you talking about? Like when you were in school, I thought you were like out of my league and and I, I like everyone I know always thought you were the most confident guy. And I was like, really? Like, I didn't see it. And because I didn't believe it, I didn't feel like it was true. But everyone else's perception was it was. So once that clicked in my head, too, I was like, well, so I am pretty confident. I put out a confident vibe. And I also know how to defend myself from all the tactical stuff. Yeah, I'm going to go out tonight. What's the worst that's going to happen? I'm either going to have fun or I'm going to have a funny story at the end of the night. And that's basically it. So once I realized that stuff, and, and you don't have to be like a knife fighting, gun shooting guy like me to, to be a confident guy. Just go and take some martial arts classes, take some judo, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, some grappling. Get used to be, I think that was a big thing for me too, being used to being close to people because mm. of grappling arts. Um, a lot of people are uncomfortable being close or, or touching other people. I never had that issue. But just, just something, Krav Maga, even just whatever martial arts that's in your neighborhood, just do something. Because then also that's like what we call a DHV story and a DHV activity. Like when I'm hanging out with a girl when I'm single, I have a girlfriend now, but she'll say like, hey, let's hang out this week. What, do you, what about Tuesday night? And I go, oh, I can't. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I got martial arts class. And so just right there, that's something that separates me from all the other guys because they're at home playing World of Warcraft or whatever the fuck. Right. So instead of leveling up a video game character, I'm leveling up myself. And I think that's the biggest thing from all of it is trying to level up myself in different areas. And if you're, if you're bad at stuff and good at other things, I don't work on the things I'm good at to level up. I want to level up the things I'm bad at, just like a video game character. Mm. So that's why when I got into pickup, I literally for four years didn't think about martial arts at all and just worked on all the self-help, self-improvement stuff. And then when I started my own company, I kind of now merged the two. So right. does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's very cool because a lot of the alpha male uh, focused coaches or whatever out there uh, seem to be um, – not alpha. <laughs> that's that's definitely one point, uh, and they also seem to have this this um, 
attitude that to be the alpha male, you have to like uh, almost oppress everyone else. You have to be like the, the leader, the big boss and everyone, you know, while you're saying that you're more focused on giving respect to people than, than trying to raise yourself above them or be cooler or tougher or whatever, you're actually connecting with them and showing them that, you know, you're, you're on their team and you're one of them. But, but you can attest for this too, because doing judo and stuff, um, all the guys I know, and I've met some bad dudes, like some like top level special forces guys. I've done training and been to events where there's guys there who can't even tell me their name because I don't have military clearance to like, no, like they are usually, I mean, everyone I work and, and train with and do stuff with, they're the nicest guys I've ever met because they have nothing to prove. And these are the guys, I mean, a lot of them are fucking killers. A lot of these guys are like special forces dudes who have taken guys out close quarter, maybe with edge weapons or whatever. Like I met some bad dudes. They're the nicest guys, the most easy going guys. These aren't the guys when you go out to the bar, get shit faced drunk and cause trouble because they have nothing to prove. Right. It's always the guys, guys who feel like they have something to prove that are yelling about how badass and tough they are. And the true badasses can see those guys from a mile away and they never, they, they don't even, they just don't even waste time on it. And there is something too, like, like I know the guys talk about it, alpha male, beta male. They don't even get that term right because the alpha male is like the head, the head lion or the head wolf. The beta male is the one right behind them. So even in pickup, they fucked up that term. They're like, oh, don't be beta. Like being beta is bad. Personally, I don't, like when I worked at companies, I don't want to be the head guy because then all the stress and all the fucking pressure's on me. Mm -hmm. I never wanted to start my own company. I never wanted to do this shit. I always liked being like the second chair or the guy just behind the scenes who takes care of things and People don't know anything about them. Like, I actually enjoy that because then I, I do all the stuff I like with none of the pressure or not as much pressure, but I get less money. Um, but I'm fine with it. So then starting my own company, I was like, all right, now I got to be the top guy, which is a lot of pressure, a lot of work, especially I have a forum with like thousands of guys underneath me. I have my junior coaches and I, I run my own events and it's a lot of work. And I don't, I don't, I mean, I, I'm happy I'm doing it. I've learned a lot from it. I can handle it. But even some days when I'm doing it, I'm like, man, I only got two hours of sleep tonight. I don't, I don't like being that guy. Mm. Um, but the, really, if, you, if there's a, a one term, and Johnny and I were joking about this one day. He talks about the aloha male. And then if you look up, there's a new term for omega male, which omega right. is like the lowest of the low. Mm -hmm. He's the bottom of the pack. Well, I read one, one thing on Urban Dictionary about that where they go, oh, the omega male sits back while the alpha and the beta duke it out. And while they're fighting, the omega goes around and mates – with the female lioness. And I was like, that's kind of more of my mindset. I always like trying to be in the background and not deal with a lot of shit. I don't, I don't advertise. I don't do affiliate stuff with, um, and pick up. I just do my own thing. I only spoke at a couple of events, speak at a couple of events and that's it. So that's always been my mindset. When I go out to the bar and club too, I'm not the loud guy. I'm not the obnoxious guy. I like just being cool and hanging out with my friends. If I see a girl I think is attractive, I'll go and talk to her. And if I see a, a shit, a shitty situation or some drama going on like i don't i'm not the guy who goes in there and tries to out alpha everyone because i don't have anything to prove to some drunk guys at a bar i don't even like going to bars i don't even really drink i've only been like drunk like six times in my life and like four of those were like in high school so <laughs> it's just it's just not even my thing so i don't even like dealing with all that bullshit i like just doing my thing living my life doing cool shit and along the way meeting cool people which 50 48 percent of them are women that's really all i do yeah, exactly. And and now you you touched on this before, but I wanna wanna make a point out of it. Cause how do you help guys get from, you know, where they're at to there, to the place where they're comfortable, where they don't need feel the need to, you know, uh, prove anything to anyone. They don't need the have the need to go out and make a point. They just go out to do what they want to do because it makes sense to them. I mean, most guys out there who, who struggle with these things struggle with them because they're not secure enough in themselves. They don't have that, that confidence or whatever you want to call it. So what do you do or, or what do you recommend they do to get to a place where they're much more comfortable like you are? Well, I'm not going to get too much into it, but I was reading up on something a while ago. It talks about the different levels. I think it's the nine stages of ego. And the people who have that where they still want to go out and, and get all that attention and be cool and seek other people's approval, that's like the adolescent or like high school level of our ego. And the people that are, that are in that frame like never evolve past that. And they're always looking for that validation. And they're always looking for people to tell them they're doing a good job and they need to like rub it in other people's faces. And that's just where they're stuck. Um, I really felt like even in school, I wasn't at that place. Like I kind of felt like an outsider because I just didn't care. 
what all these people who I wasn't going to see in four years, like what they thought or anything. So for me, it's weird because like I, I kind of already was like thinking like that, which then kind of hurts you when you're younger, but helps you when you're older. Um, but with a lot of guys, they never got through that period where either like their parents approved them or they got a girlfriend or they had those experiences. And because they, they didn't experience it, they like start building it up in their head and they think if only I get a girl, then everything will be okay. And so I think the biggest thing is, A, just giving it to them straight that that's not going to bring them happiness. You need to be happy with yourself before you can be happy with someone else because a relationship isn't shouldn't be codependent where I'm not complete without her and she's not complete without me and together we somehow make it work. That's never going to work. It's not healthy. Like with my girlfriend now, she's fucking awesome. I mean, she was at the last event. Well, she, no, two events ago in Vegas. Yeah. Um, and it was there and she's awesome. She's really attractive. She's super cool. She does awesome work. She helps people for a job. She makes a imp- positive impact on the world. Um, she's into cool shit and does her own thing too. It's not all just about hanging out with me and, and like, like I said, being a, a parasitic or codependent relationship. So that was important to me. So got a lot of guys just aren't there yet. So when I work with them, I'm like, all right, you're still a big pussy. Like you still care too much what people think about you. Um, you're stu- still too scared when you go out. You're worried that something bad's going to happen. You're scared that this is going to happen in your life. You're going to get beat up. So start learning how to train and, and take care of yourself. Oh, you're out of shape. Okay, start losing weight. Because any of the things that, that are holding them back, which a lot of it, I mean, you know, once you get to a certain level, yeah, you could be overweight. And you're like, yeah, I'd like to be a little bit healthier, but that's not going to hold me back. And things only hold us back if we allow them to hold us back. So one of the things for those guys at the beginning is you got to break through those chains to show them that it doesn't matter. Because what – when you're trying to explain to someone, well, it's like the four levels of mastery. You're trying to explain to a kid how to drive a car. It's not going to make sense until they drive a car and get all those miles under their belt. And then later they'll go, oh, now I see what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't have to do this every time. I can actually relax when I'm driving. So you got to kind of take them through the process and show them that, yeah, these are things that will hold you back. But we can work on them or fix them like guys I do one-on-one with. We'll take them out and instantly get them a haircut and buy them a new outfit. And we try it on at the mall. And once they find an outfit that works well, they buy it. And then I have them put it on. So that way they're wearing it two minutes later. Uh, then they start going out and doing all these openers or approaches that they never would think would work in a million years or they're going to instantly get rejected. And by me having them do this, they realize through experience, through firsthand experience, that what I told them is true and that their belief system was flawed and it wasn't working. So once I can kind of get to that point where I show them that, hey, all the AFC stuff you've been thinking – AFC's average frustrated chump. That's a PUA term for the guys who are listening. Um, once you get to that, that, that that's area where you're realizing that your belief system's flawed and all these, fear, all these beliefs and fears that you have are irrational and you've just imagined them and created them, just as easily as you imagine negative shit, you can imagine positive shit. And just as easily as you, you what if negative outcomes, you can what if positive outcomes. And then also all the things that you thought were going to happen don't happen. Usually after about one to two days with guys, they can go back home and they're like, whoa, this is like getting unplugged from the matrix and now I'm questioning everything. And then they go back home. They kind of start falling into a rut because they're on the high from the one-on-one. They go back home. Then I talk to them and they go back out again and it pumps back up. And they're like, holy shit, like I got a date tomorrow. Oh my God, I just got laid the other night. And I have a whole section on my forum from guys I've worked with. And you can see all these posts where I coach the guy and like a week later, he's going out and getting laid. And they're like, I wouldn't have believed it if it didn't happen. So you got to go through that. And then once they realize that that stuff's true, then they start thinking maybe the other stuff Bravo was talking about is true. That's perfect. Now, I know that there's a lot of people who resonate with what you're saying and what you're, what you're teaching. And the proof uh, is easy to find because you have what you call the Bravo hood. Uh, yeah, one of my guys named it that. My nickname's Bravo. We were coming up with a name for the forum, so they called it the Bravo hood. But I'm on it like all the time. Like one of the things that bugged me back in the day was you'd read the book, you'd get on these websites, and there's all these guys whose names at the top of the page, they post. They're not on it. They're not active. They're not trying to help people. And the whole website's just designed to make money. So I, I put no ads on my site. I have a giant blog. And then the forum, I'm the number one poster. I have more posts than anyone else on my forum. I have thousands of guys on it. And at the top, there's a, there's a quote. It says, in union, there's strength. And I really believe that because we're all in this together. And, and like my guys, like when I travel – I hang out with the guys on my forum. We have get-togethers. I've had guys fly out here for our, our forum anniversary, and um, it's a big deal. So one of the guys named it the Bravo, Bravo Hood because it's a brotherhood, and we really feel it's like that. So, yeah. It's, it's very cool. Now, um, 
how did that grow to because I know there's there's a ton of guys on there and there's a ton of you know posts and, and how did you get that um, level of community uh, within your your followers lots of hard work a lot of guys set up a forum and they think oh, I'll just have a forum and guys will come here doesn't work that way um, when I started working for style life um, there was and I haven't publicly talked about this stuff so this is this is interesting to share but what happened is with Style Life, um, when, they, when they started it, it was a monthly program. So you buy, bought it, it was a subscription service, and they had a public forum, which was really, really big, and I was the admin on that eventually. And then they had the um, a private forum, which was the paid forum. And so I was a coach, and we had coaching threads, we had flash chats and all this stuff on the private forum. And then they had a public forum. Well, there's obviously a lot more people on the free public side of things compared to the paid side. So a lot of other guys that I worked with, like, didn't post on the forum, weren't active. Um, when I was executive coach, I kind of made it where, hey, guys, we kind of have to have, like, a presence. I want everyone posting a certain amount each week. And then guys would wait until, like, Sunday night, like, to do their eight posts or whatever it was. Um, whereas I was just constantly on it. Like, I'm a forum guy. I enjoy being on it. I enjoy learning. I'm on Reddit all the time. I, re I love reading blogs and stuff. And to me, it's, like, like, it's just awesome because I can hop on it on my phone, read something interesting, get back to work or whatever. So when everyone else was on this private side, like I posted a lot still on the public forum and I posted on other people's forums and on Venusian arts forum, which is mysteries uh, at the time it was this new company. Like they, they put, made me, a, they listed underneath me that I was a coach. So then other people could see me on there. I posted on, um, on my buddy's Facebook page. I'm very active social media wise. You can see my Facebook page and all the shit I post and just most of it's just me fucking around, but there's like good information there. But even me fucking around is me just having fun. And so I, I started doing all that stuff and I post on these forums. I, and then we, I ran a blog for style life. And then when everything went down the way it did and I started my own company, like I had enough Facebook friends and enough followers, enough guys who, who knew who I am. Even the guy I just did a coaching call with yesterday. He's like, Oh yeah, I remember you from seven years ago. And I finally decided to do some coaching calls because you were the only guy I felt like I knew and I could trust and I got a snapshot of what you're about. And that's what I hear all the time from my guys. And I always tell them like, wow, thanks. That's exactly what I'm trying to accomplish. Mm. So then when I set up my blog, I set up my blog first and I didn't know if it was going to fucking work. I don't know if enough people care about that. So I set up my blog, posted some of my articles, wrote a couple new blog posts and the comment section started getting really big. And then eventually like, and I was thinking about doing my own forum, but eventually like some of my guys who were fans of mine that I have developed over four or five years, um, we're like, Hey, you should set up your own forum. So, I mean, I've never taken a computer class in my life. I barely fucking graduated high school. I ended up figuring out how to set up WordPress, how to set up a forum. I changed my theme. I set it up, started posting on it. I just did one section at the beginning, started adding more sections when we needed them because I'm active, because I post on it. I check it multiple times a day. I moderate it to make sure there's not bad shit or spam. Like I have three rules on my forum. No girls. Don't spam your shitty PUA product. And don't be a dickhole. Those are my only three rules. Because everyone tries to hop on the site once they see it's going, and they don't offer value. They just try to take value and try to, hey, I'm going to sell my product. Or girls like hopping on there too and trying to give guys advice. And I dealt with that years ago where it's like some not so attractive girl trying to tell guys like how to pick up chicks. And I'm like, nope, your advice is, is worthless. And then also just won't, don't be a dick. That's it. So doing that, enforcing it, making it like a safe, cool place for guys to post. Um, I have some private sections that aren't Google indexed which are actually probably the most active section, which hurts me like Google SEO wise, not having that stuff public, but I'd rather have my guys have a safe place where they can like post their, their, their link to their plenty of fish profile and stuff where we can critique it. And like I said, lots of hard work. I'm posting on it every day. I have over a thousand posts more. Maybe it's like 1500 posts more than anyone else on my forum. And the other top posters are like my advanced guys and my coaches. They're not just all keyboard jockeys. Like our forum, I have guys who, who signed up with other companies, paid for it. They come to my free forum and they're like, I learned more from your free forum than I did at that paid place. So once I developed all that, which like I said, took years, that's why I have the following and stuff that I do. And like when, if you look at my about me page, like Neil, like mystery and hypnotica and Steve P and Ross and all these guys who've never like, they don't even, a lot of them don't even like each other, but for some reason, all of them like have endorsed me and they all think I'm legit. I think it's like game recognizes game and, and positivity recognizes positivity. And I never forget where I came from. Like I never regret, I never forget how, how desperate I was and how sad I was and how lonely I was after I got divorced. 
and I felt like damaged goods. And so many guys are trying to capitalize on other people and trying to make money off of them because they know they can. Whereas I specifically tell guys like, no, don't, don't buy coaching calls from me. Like I had a guy who wanted to come to one of my boot camps and he goes, um, well, I don't have the money right now, but I'll get a secondary credit card or I'll go to like quick cash and get a loan so I can come to your event. And I go, no, don't do that. Like, don't go that far into debt to come to my event. Like, just come to the next one, save up. And there really aren't a lot of people like that. And I think once enough people realize I'm like that, it's not just talk, it's all legit. Mm. The guy started kind of coming in and realizing that I'm a pretty good guy. <laughs> pretty cool guy. See, and, and what you're saying kind of just affirms what I've experienced with you because you're, you're one of the guys that truly enjoy connecting with people and you truly want to help people. And it's not it's not about the money, about the status or the fame or whatever it is. And and that's even on you know, when we when we teach at the same workshops or whatever, I see you're one of the few coaches that are actually making the rounds and, and having conversations with anyone and everyone and doing whatever you can to help uh, when you can. And so, you know, I think that's probably why also all these people who don't really like each other like you, because I've never seen you treat anyone differently based on who they are or, or, you know, whatever. And also, you know, just putting in that effort and time that you have on all these different forums and with all these different conversations uh, makes people connect to you a lot more. And with the, the confidence and, and, you know, your, your style of alpha maleness that you have, there's no threat in, in liking you. There's no, there's no challenge there. It's just ease. So I appreciate that. Yeah, it, it, it seems perfectly congruent with what you've been saying this this past hour or so and that's and that's the big thing it's like it is all, I, I am what i am and so when like, i go into the events like that's always something that bugged me like going because i've been there where i went to events and stuff before and uh, the guys who were like teaching would show up teach and then psh, they're gone and i'm like come on like you're are you a fucking rock star like just hang out for a little bit like i I'm not saying I'm Mr. Big Shot, but like at events, I have students come up and they're like, Bravo, can I get my picture with you? Bravo, can I get your autograph? And I'm like, wait, what? You're like, <laughs> like I had guys asking me to autograph the game for them. And I'm like, you do know I'm not in that book, right? Like I'm in rules of the game, which was okay, but I'm not in the game. Like I'm not in that book. And they're like, no, no, I still want your autograph. And I was like, and the first time that ever happened, I'd like grab a pen and I was like, just a second, because I've never written the word out Bravo before. So I like, I just script, got a napkin. I'm like, how am I going to do my autograph? And I found out later that my B on my website is like the B from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I didn't know that. <laughs> um, but so going to those events and like seeing this and seeing how people are, I was always like, I don't like that. And like, it rubs me the wrong way. And guys who are on that have their websites and they, you email them or you Facebook them and they don't even take like the 10 seconds out to respond. And I know how overwhelming it is. Like I get emails every day. You, I know you do Facebook messages. Hey man, real quick, just real quick. There's this one question. There's this one girl. The difference is I got smart about it and was like, all right, I can't answer any more of these. So I did like a post on my forum that says like, hey, thanks for, for sending me this message. I don't have time to answer it. And then I answer all these questions right there. And so now I can at least just copy and, and, and paste <laughs> that link to them. And I go, hey, man, I'm really busy. But here, read this. And in that post, I say, if you have a question and you register for my forum and post your question, send me the link, I'll, I'll log in and I'll respond to your question personally. Yeah. And it's interesting because like, 2% of guys actually follow through with all that. So that's kind of my screening test to like get rid of the guys who really aren't even going to listen to our advice anyways, but just at least responding to people. Like even yesterday I found one in my Facebook, my other box, because the guy messaged me, we're not friends. It was like from two months ago. So I just messaged him last night. I'm like, hey man, I didn't get this. I just got this now. Hey, if you still need help with this, blah, blah, blah. But here's, here's some advice real quick. Because like I said, I'll never forget where I was and how desperate I was and how sad I was and how crushed I was and how I almost didn't make it through my divorce and Absolutely. how, how, how sad I was afterwards. I'll never forget that. And I think these other guys, they're, they're seeking this validation. They want to be cool. And so to them being cool to a bunch of guys who aren't good with women, like makes them feel cool. Whereas realistically, like that's not cool. Like normal people in the real world don't think I'm cool because I run a site that teaches guys how to talk to girls. Right. Like they don't, they think I'm the opposite of cool for them. <laughs> Um, so really it's just realizing where we're at, never forgetting where I was and just trying to, I mean, I learned, I realized somehow I stumbled upon it, like helping people out and just being as helpful and giving as I could turned out to be a pretty good business model. And I didn't even know anything about business back then. So mm. kind of worked out, which, like I said, Johnny and all these guys that we know, 
they do a lot of giving too. I mean, Johnny puts all of his videos online and then look at the seminars and stuff he does. It's kind of yeah. a lot of the guys that are good do that and it works out pretty well. Absolutely. So at the very end of our talk, what would be your top advice for the guys uh, watching this who are feeling like, you know, they, they want to be more, they want to feel more confident. They want to get out there. They want to meet people. They want to feel secure in themselves. Maybe, you know, be able to defend themselves that they want the package that you have. What would be your advice for them? All right. So let's say I do like a one-on-one -on -one with the guy. He's going back home and he's like, all right, I want to get into this stuff because I'm not doing this to sell any shit. Like if guys want to come to my website afterwards, they can. I don't even think I said it once. You said the Bravo hood, but my nickname is Bravo PUA. If people want to find me, they can just Google that and find my Facebook or my website or whatever. I don't even care about any of that stuff. But um, a lot like, and so if the guys who watch this never even come to my site, that's totally fine. So uh, thinking like if it was a guy I trained and he's going back home and I mean, he's going to do his own thing now, the advice I would give him is try to find a martial arts school that's near your house because the martial arts school that's near your house, you're more likely to go to just like the gym the okay gym that's near your house is better than the awesome gym like an hour away. You're more likely to go to the place that's close by. And every martial art has something good, but it has more to do with the instructor. So go out and try some different schools and find one that you like, that you connect with. And I mean, I've done lots of different stuff, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu at multiple places, um, Aiki Jiu-Jitsu, which is the forerunner Aikido. I did Kin Jitsu. And finally, when I started studying Kali, which is the Filipino edge weapon system, specifically Sayak Kali, like to me, that's the best thing I've ever found. And I train multiple times a week. I have a great instructor out here in Arizona. Uh, we're under a guru who I've trained with, and he's one of the baddest dudes ever. And they're the nicest people, and it's the scariest, most awesome shit ever. And it applies to everything else I do in my life, too. So I, I'm actually getting into the instructor program, like, next month. And I'm moving up north in, a, in a, a, like, two or three months with my girlfriend up in uh, Flagstaff, Arizona. And I'm going to start running my own training group up there of this martial arts style because, I mean, I'm busy, but it's so awesome for me to keep training. And for me to like help spread it, I want to I want to do as much as I can. Very cool. So if you can find one of those places near near your Kali or especially Sayak Kali, sign up. A lot of people, it might not be their style because it's pretty pretty intense. Um, but jujitsu, judo, Brazilian jujitsu, even kung fu, any of that stuff, find something that you like because you're getting out of the house, you're getting active, you you're, you're you have a new social circle, you're doing a new activity. It's a DHV activity. You're demonstrating higher value. And then along the way, you're going to learn cool stuff. I like weapon-based systems because real life has weapons. So for me, edge weapon training, firearms training, and like close quarter combat, which is like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and like striking systems. That's what I'd personally recommend. Um, guys that who also want to get back home and start leveling up in the pickup area of their life or the social area of their life, there's no secret to it. It's just my roadmap is very simple. I read the – literally, when I got into pickup, the only material I read or watched, because back then there wasn't all this shit on the internet like there is now, I read Neil's book, The Game, and I got Mystery's book, How to Attract Beautiful Women or How to Get Beautiful Women into Bed. I still haven't even finished that second book. Like that's, and that's literally all I ever did. I've read other things, but pickup-wise, that's all I ever did. The difference is I went out, and within one night, first night of reading The Game, the third of the way through, I was out trying stuff. And because I got divorced and my ex and I sold our house, we'd actually made a lot of money. Like when the bubble popped and everyone lost their ass like three months later. So I was basically able to take like a year off. And so I went out for like three or four nights a week going out late at night. I don't have a lot of money to spend. So I wasn't going out drinking because that wasn't my purpose to go out and get drunk. It was to learn a skill set. So going out, trying, practicing things, all the places I was like, Ooh, I don't like those kind of bars. I don't like those kind of clubs going out to those places, finding out why I didn't like them. Figuring out how to learning, uh, figuring out how to learn and thrive in chaos at those places, um, and, and just doing all these different things out of my comfort zone, and realizing that I had imagined, for whatever reason, my imagination decided these other things were out of my comfort zone, and I don't like them. So trying out and doing new things, and just saying yes to all these opportunities that were there, and when girls were interested in hanging out, for me to realize, like it was, it, they were fortunate to hang out with me. For me not realize, thinking I'm fortunate to hang out with them. And so it was just a lot of things along the way. And then ultimately the biggest thing was just going out and doing it. Even if I had bad nights, not quitting. Um, there's a great quote from Tony Robbins. He says, true change comes from inspiration or desperation. Well, after reading the book, I was inspired. And after my divorce, I was desperate. So I, was, I had never had a moment where I doubted this stuff. And I gave myself a year 
A lot of guys go out like one or two nights and they're like, oh, this shit won't work for me. But just like martial arts, just like playing the guitar, I gave myself a year before I was going to go back and assess and see where, where, what I had learned and if I had improved. I realized it's about three or four months that I was getting better and starting to get glimmers of the matrix. And then about six months in, I started having some pretty crazy success. And I went out to, like I said, all those places I wasn't comfortable with, met a lot of people, had a lot of awesome fun times and great experiences. But I also realized along the way that like, I don't like bars and clubs. I, I thought that beforehand, but I, I didn't really test it and, and try it. And then I did it just like eating food. Like why say you don't like food without trying it? So I did the same thing, tried it, went there, had fun. I could teach in those places. I can pull girls from those places if I want. But I will say I've never met a girl that I actually really connected with at a bar or club. I met girls I had fun with, but never a girl I connected with. All the girls I connected with, I either met through my social circle, uh, during day game, or, which I don't even call it day game, just out and about living my life, um, or online, which then that's kind of the thing I kind of became known for later was online game which again, I didn't even think I was that good at it or anything. And then along the way, I actually, I realized that I, I kind of cracked the code or whatever. But I think that's the biggest thing is just going out and doing something. Because if you sit on the couch, you, every day you don't go out, it's going to be twice as hard the next day to go out. And he who hesitates, masturbates. <laughs> so if you're sitting, tired of sitting at home and you're not happy with the life you have, and like with me after my divorce, it wasn't just sitting at home, it was laying in bed at night. On my side of the bed, I wasn't even like, moving over yet I still slept on my side of the bed and I'm looking up at the ceiling at night by myself and just going why am I alone like she's already off with some new guy why am I by myself why am I fucking doomed to this and then I realized that I'm living the life I deserve because everything I was experiencing was because of my action or inaction and I made a decision right then all right this has to change because I can't handle it anymore I cannot survive another year of this bullshit so going out trying, never quitting. I mean, having some bad nights, but never quitting and going out and trying this. And eventually I got better and better and better. And I mean, shit, like I said, if I can get to this point where I'm teaching this stuff, just to where you're good at it, let alone teaching. If I can get to this point, anyone can get to this fucking point. Cause I'm, I'm a fucking caveman. Like I said, barely graduated high school, never take a computer class. If I can figure this shit out, anyone can do it. The difference is they just don't want it bad enough. And I wanted it bad. So that's I got it. Perfect. Now our hours coming to an end. So at the very end, you said you don't care, but I care. Where should people go to find more information about you and your stuff? So if they want to learn most of this, the simplest way is going to my Bravo PUA website, which is just bravopua.com. Um, I've been doing enough stuff for, for long enough now. And a lot of guys that are coming to me because of this alpha male training, because to me, I, one of the quotes I said years ago um, which actually Hypnotica, one of the event him and CP were doing, I was on stage and I said, uh, my belief is if you can't protect yourself or your loved ones, you're not a man. And so like Hypnotica afterwards was like, man, that's really awesome. So he went and got like a shotgun and stuff afterwards. And then I, I re again, I didn't realize it was that big of a deal until later all these guys were like, man, I want to learn this shit from you. So now a lot of my one-on-ones guys come out and like, we'll do one day of pickup training where I teach them inner game for half the day. Then I take them out to the bars or actually usually the mall or day games actually better for teaching. And I'll take them out. We'll do some cold approach pickup and then I'll critique them and, and we'll, we'll work on things. And then the second day we're doing all this alpha male stuff. Like, cause I'm in Arizona guys can come out here. We like, we'll go out shooting guns the first half of the day and I'm like an expert marksman. So I'll teach them stuff like within like an hour, they'll be doing like headshots like that at like 10 yards. Um, then we'll do like some knife fighting. The last one on one I did with the guy wanted to do desert survival. So we'll see. I'm kind of thinking about moving more towards just my real name because so many people know me from that now, Stephen Grudge. But right now, I think the easiest, simplest way, and I'll always have the website, bravopua.com. And the tagline for it is a real man's guide to pick up dating and life. And I really thought long and hard about that because so many of these guys just try to teach other people how to be pickup artists. Well, like we talked about earlier, especially before this call started, um, most of us don't want to hang out with guys who are pickup artists because they're not cool. They're not socially calibrated. You can't have fun with them. It's all about just trying to get laid and you're walking down the sidewalk with them and they just can't talk to you. They have to keep running away and approaching girls. And I never liked that. I want guys I could be friends with and hang out with. But yeah, if we also want to talk to some chicks, we could do that too. Then a lot of these guys try to give dating advice, but they've never been in relationships, let alone healthy relationships. So how can they talk about that? And then also like the end, a real man's guy to pick up dating in life. 
I figure like I kind of got the life they kind of taken care of. Um, the cool shit I've done, the cool people that are in my life, the way I live my life, how I, I work when I want, how I want, where I want, um, with the people I want, and I do exactly what I love. Like to me, this isn't even work. Like right now we're camping for a camping trip. So I'm going out of town in four days or for four days. So after this call, I'm literally hopping in the car. We're heading out and I just get to do all the cool, awesome shit I want with my friends, where I want, how I want, when I want. And so to me, being able to have that freedom is, is pretty fucking awesome. So I'm not trying to brag, but I really am kind of living the life that like people dream about. And I have like the coolest girl I've ever met in my life. Um, I do all the coolest shit I want to do. I do the classes I want to do and all the things like now. It's hard for me, like I have a goal list and I'm working on new things. It's hard for me to like come up with new things because I keep check marking them off the list, like desert survival and all. And I'm taking um, like classes where we go out to the woods just with a knife or I'm going to have to survive for like three days with that. Like any new thing I'm getting into, I'm just able to go and do it. So it's pretty awesome. And all the skill sets I'm learning along the way, once I feel like I'm, I'm qualified enough to teach it, guys can come to me and I'm happy to share as much information as I can with other guys on any of the stuff I do. That's very awesome. We're going to end our talk here. Thank you very much for being here and have a great trip uh, camping. I will. If you guys never hear from me again, <laughs> call the president. Tell him I'm in the mountains now. Um, Hopefully I'll see all... you at some workshop or seminar or something uh, in the future oh, as well. I'm prepared. When we go out, I got so much gear, GPSs and stuff, comms, <laughs> radios. We're good. But, nice. yeah, thank you for having me on. This is one of the few. I, don't, I get asked to do a lot of these. You're one of the guys I would, I'm happy to do this with. I'd ha happy to do more in the future. I wish you guys the best with this website. And guys who are watching this, TJ's one of the good guys. Um, I, I'm glad you guys found your way here. And, yeah, I, I, I enjoy learning from them. Actually, your last talk, your analogy about the different experiences on the roller coaster. Remember at um yeah, yeah. at a Disneyland? Uh -huh. Yeah, I actually I use that now when I teach my guys. I'm, I'm honored. I go, hey, I, I heard this from TJ. I will say I, I added one other aspect to it, though. Um, my first job, I worked in a haunted house. So then I talk about how there's a fourth perspective from the people who actually worked there. So then it's like even a mind blowing thing that, right. oh, whoa, I'd never even think about that. That's it. So yeah, I saw TJ talk last time and I was like, and I pulled out my iPhone and I wrote that down. I was like, fuck, that's good. So I use that in all my one on ones now. I always give credit. Um, so you guys found a good guy. I'm happy you're here and I'll try to help out as much as I can. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right, cool. See you soon. Bye, guys.